Welcome to my talk. And um, yeah, I will talk about uh, flexible routing in the first part of the talk, and then I will come to the second part, uh, which is about data analysis with Graph Opera. I'm Peter, a physicist and a problem solver, and also the co founder of a Graph Opera. Uh, company. What we are doing as a company is uh, to build the routing stack of the future. So, um, with lots of open source software and utilizing open data, open street map, GTFS, and of course also earning money. And um, yeah, to also invest this in our software and community. <clears throat> For people that don't know Graphhopper, the easiest thing is uh, to show them our uh, website. Oops. Ah, come on. How is it going then? Um, so here we are, and um, let's go from uh, Heidelberg. Oops, why is it not writing? Heidelberg. Oh, come on. It's not starting well today. Um, let's get back to the slide. It's not a tech event if there isn't technical things that happen. I think the Wi-Fi is working. So that's what I want, <clears throat> wanted to show. So uh, going from um, the railway station by uh, wa walking to um, the, the university, and uh, yeah, what you can see is an elevation profile here on the left, uh, on the right, and. Um, Graphhopper is uh, basically doing the routing, so it prints the geometry, the instructions, the elevation, and everything else, like the map tiles, uh, is coming from a different server, so it can also pick um, different views for, on, for the map. That's not coming from Graphhopper. And also the geocoding, which uh, converts um, the addresses and coordinates, that's also not from Graphhopper. So really just um, uh, the, the routing stuff. And <clears throat> the routing engine is really an open source project under the Apache license. And it's a Java library, but so it can be integrated in any Java application. And um, it's also a web service which you can start on your uh, server and yeah, but again, it uh, doesn't serve maps or geocoding. It's fast and memory efficient for what it does, of course, and it works with OpenStreetMap, Data, GTFS, and others like TomTom or Here Maps and whatever. And we have implemented some root. We have Im implemented many routing algorithms like Dijkstra, ASTAL, Landmarks, Contraction Hierarchy, and it works out of the box with a few um, travel modes like car, bike, walking, public transit, and motorcycle, and so on. <clears throat> there are many features, and so what I listed is not all. There are many more features that you can view on uh, github.com slash graphhopper slash graphhopper, and I have uh, selected just two new features. 
that are specifically useful for data analysis <clears throat> for this talk. <clears throat> the first new feature is the vector tiles endpoint, which means that uh, you can grab the data that is in Graphhopper and display it uh, right into the browser to, um, yeah, to debug the routing algorithm or just to see what's in there or even yeah, use it for other data analysis um, tasks um, that I will show you today. <clears throat> A similar feature is the shortest path tree endpoint. So what's the shortest path tree? It's um, yeah, the ki kind of the structure that you get if you explore a graph from a starting point and then the, this endpoint will get, give you the, the driving time from the start point to a specific node and, and that for all the coordinates. So you specify the start coordinate, the travel mode and the time limit and you get back coordinates and in each of those um, cases the driving time you need from the start <coughs> to the coordinate. And along, <coughs> additionally to the driving time to each of those coordinates you will get um, different um, properties like uh, the highway tags or the maximum speeds and so on. So you can not only um, analyze uh, the, the specific properties, driving time to the coordinates, but also um, generic properties. And yeah, <clears throat> so this is um, released in, in, the, in the latest uh, stable release, uh, 0 0.13, which was released on Wednesday. And um, I, I really recommend to try it out. So it should be relatively easy to, to grab the code, start it on your laptop, and then play around with it. Um, now I'm coming to the part uh, for the data analysis. Uh, I've just thought about what uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure if those tasks or those um, data analysis use cases are really uh, useful in practice. But I think um, it, it, it should mainly show you that GraphHub is able to handle massive amount of data in, in, in a good uh, speed. And so, so it can be even used on a weaker computer with not so uh, much memory. And, and yes, some of those examples could be even useful in practice. So the first one is um, a, a what if scenario case okay, so that you can simulate what happens if you close a bridge or shut down a tunnel or something. And obviously it's really simple. So, so that's a visual, also again a visualized uh, shortest path tree and the more or less red center is where the coordinates or the, the coordinates with the same color means um, you will get there in roughly the same time. So the red circle in the middle is um, the same time like the band around the center in, in blue color. <clears throat> and if you shut down the bridges, then of course you can't, can't go up. Um, more over the river. And the same can be done with uh, motorways. So you can just say, hey, on, on the top the image shows uh, without motorways, on the bottom then with motorways. And again, the color, the same color means roughly the same uh, driving time for those coordinates with the same color. So even those arms on the left side in the bottom picture shows uh, that's reachable in the same time like the blue on, on the right side and much closer to the center. But as you can go on the motorway much faster, then it's much more away from the center. <clears throat> and just 
to um, to tell you about this. And and now imagine you uh, print some line between the um, different colors. So on on the border of each of those color bands, then those are kind of isochrone that might be familiar to you more than those uh, sh directly shortest path tree on in the browser browser <clears throat> okay now i'm uh, on on friday we had a routing workshop here in heidelberg and i learned about this uh, kind of stress level uh, for, for traffic that uh, some some biking community in ottawa used and the more i thought about this the more i was sure that we already yeah, calculate this in our engine. So kind of avoid dangerous things and prefer official bike routes. And what you can already see here is, is the uh, green roads are aligned with the purple um, map of um, Thunder Forest Cycle. It's a Thunder for a cycle map, so. Um, I will just show you this in a demo. So um, this is the Thunder Forest cycle map. And if we print now or overlay this with our own vector tiles, you will see that the purple um, Road is overlaid with the green, um, with the, the green roads from coming from our uh, routing engine. So green means it's it's a really low stress level, so without stress. And uh, yellow means it's the stress level is okay. And orange is a bit more stress level, and red is the highest stress level or not accessible at all. So again, what you can see is. Um, that some of the roads also might have um, some, yeah, some, some a red level. This might be happen due to some elevation increase or something. And <clears throat> what you can see on the left side is all the details that those uh, data has. So the maximum speed and also the name, of course, and so on. <clears throat> So I just wanted to show you also that um, basically this data is coming from Graphhopper with all the city names. And now if you, uh, if you um, scroll through data, um, this is coming from my local laptop. So it's not, uh, it does not require internet. And you can see it's uh, pretty fast. And already kind of usable for, at least for debugging purposes, it's, it's really comfortable. And the same I've done with, um, yeah, with curvy roads. So uh, some of, some people might want to avoid them, like uh, truck drivers with a long vehicle and some others, like motorcyclists or Porsche drivers might want to prefer them and find them attractive. And so I thought, hey, let's highlight them. And it's pretty easy to calculate a kind of a factor, like a, comparing the beeline distance with the real distance. And then if it's one, then or more or less one, then it's a straight road. And if it's uh, less than, I don't know, I have picked uh, 0 0.6, then print them in red. And so I, uh, I was able to easily highlight those curvy roads. So with just um, calculating, OK, I, I've calculated this uh, uh, factor on, on the server side, but I think you can also do this on the client side. And then just modify the render rules, and you have kind of a an, an data analysis um, tool for, for your uh, road network data. There was 
um, a speed limit debate in Germany. So Germany is the, I, I, I think uh, it's the only developed country where some roads have no speed limit. And now the debate was, hey, should we introduce a default speed limit for motorways? And uh, yeah, personally, I would just introduce it as it does not have anything, any meaningful disadvantages, but let's prove our point. So I grabbed the data, the crash data from the last years in Germany, from uh, day, uh, starters. And of course, OpenStreetMap has speed limit data and now the new storage feature in GraphHopper, uh, we can save the highway tags, maximum speed, and also um, feed the crash data in GraphHopper. And with all of this, I was able to um, come, come close to some results. So the highways, we have lots of highways in Germany, and two thirds of the highways are without a speed limit. And, and the, the good sign is that this is uh, also covered from the official sources. So, and now we, and now I got uh, something like 70% of the deaths are on segments without speed limit. So this could mean anything. What you wouldn't also require is kind of a traffic density. And well, I had no time to do this, but I know there was open data. And so I appointed a journalist from Spiegel Online to, yeah, to this ideas. And uh, he, he thanked me for the inspiration and uh, calculated this, this through, uh, through and, and say um, that we could theoretically save uh, one, about 140 people per year. I wouldn't be this pessimistic. I think it's more or less yeah, the half of them, but it's still many of lives that you could save with just saying the default speed is, I don't know, some value, right? And, and, and then, of course, also enforcing this, but it's really a simple thing to do, in my opinion. Okay, just get back to geographics and um, avoid politics. So another use case is if you want to plan a new supermarket or a new fire station. And what you want to do is to find some gaps in coverage of, of this new building or something. And you can do this with an isochrone. So you initialize the isochrone calculation with uh, many starting points and then stop until you reach, I don't know, 10 minutes or 50 minutes of driving or walking. And then you immediately see that there are gaps. So um, to um, grabbing the fire station coordinates is easy from overpass and then you're done. This, this multi-source isochrone is not in the open source, uh, but, but uh, later on you see uh, you can calculate multi-source reachability or isochrones also, and I've done this in a branch of uh, the graph of a repository. I will show you the resources later. So that's, I think, one of the most useful use cases uh, that I've covered. And <clears throat> now we come to kind of the massive data scaling part. So what you usually want is to find the closest restaurants in a few minutes of walking distance or something, or even, I don't know, 10 minutes driving time. And I found this too boring. I just grabbed all the restaurants in Germany and uh, put them in GraphHopper storage and then started the, the exploration in some, some middle city in Germany, it's Erfurt, and explored Germany. So this means 9 million nodes and 12 million edges. And with the help of Graphopper, I was able to return a list of driving time sorted restaurants in under 30 seconds. So those roughly 20k restaurants um, could be easily returned and, and sorted order not only by beeline distance, but it's driving time distance or whatever you have as the cost, cost function. Now, just for fun, I plotted them for different cities in a histogram. 
And um, what we can see in Erfurt that the density of restaurants is not really big at the beginning. Um, the same in Heidelberg. But for Berlin, um, the density decreases, first of all. And, oops, and I think one of those peaks is Hamburg here. So, which means in roughly, or in the band of 180 minutes driving time, you have a peak in restaurant counts around Berlin, right? Uh, excluding other countries at the moment. So, I've not really done a, kind of an analysis what peaks or which cities or which, I don't know, areas, but um, I'm just showing you that's easily to, yeah, kind of put them all in histograms and analyze, uh, yeah, thousands of records in, in, a, in a really short time on a really weak uh, computer. And as I said already, you can do this in kind of multi-source isochrone or multi-source reachability. So what I've done now is to calculate a route, first of all, from uh, Stuttgart to Hamburg, for example, so south to north, and then um, initialize the route as a starting point and then explore the whole graph uh, kind of from um, to the west and to the east at the same time and then get back the restaurants um, for a specific driving time and put them in the histogram. You can think about this as um, or the same algorithm can al also be used to, um, to find the shortest path from a location to a river or um, yeah, kind of from a river to something. So, so it's really interesting what you can do with just Dijkstra or just this reachability analysis and, um, yeah, and, and also many uh, locations. Now, Graphhopper for data analysis has advantages. It's really fast, it handles massive amount of data and um, can be even used on a weak computer. And uh, if you want to avoid uh, loading everything into memory, there's also an option for this in Graphhopper. So um, you don't need necessarily all the memory in memory, but it will be a bit slower. The disadvantages at the moment are that you have to specify certain attributes before you, uh, you, you get started. And, and you have to put, uh, specify them so that Graphhopper can put this in the graph from the data source, like PBF. And uh, a second disadvantage is, is, a disadvantage is that you need Java knowledge for certain use cases still. And that's hopefully, uh, that hopefully we will improve. These are the resources that I spoke of. So um, there's a branch, Sotom Trials, and a re separate repository for the crash statistics. And DStat is, is probably also not that known, but it's a really useful source for different, um, and not only, of course, the deadly deaths, uh, the deadly crashes, but also the yeah, injured uh, injuries and so on. We are looking for contributors, so if you want to contribute code or the translations or just want to check out what's going on, uh, yeah, come to Graphhopper at GitHub and also to our forum. And yeah, thank you. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> Does anybody have questions for Peter? We have questions. Can I have some help here? Let me do this. Good morning. Thank you. Great talk. So I have a question to the first example you showed. Um, how difficult is it to block a road? Do I have to make a new graph or do I change weights or how is it done? Um, you mean this, this one? Exactly. This is done per request. Right. So you can change um, this yeah in, in, yeah, in the request and, and change it on every request differently like you want to have it. And the server side needs to support this in a certain cost function, but that's now easy to do. And you can see this also in the branch of Southern Trials at 
to catch and up repository. The travel times of the other streets are constant or are they also changing by blocking the street because usually then other streets get more traffic? What do you mean? So if you block one street, the surrounding streets, for example, gets more traffic and so you have, you get stuck. So is this counted in somehow or? You mean if you can incorporate traffic data or? Yeah, at the end, yeah. Yeah, sure, you can also do this um, in different kinds of ways. So either with a post request and directly change the graph or yeah. There are different ways to do this in Graphable. Uh, hi, thank you for, for the talk. So I have a question regarding this memory fruit footprint. You said you, you can, we can run this on, on, on the yeah, reasonably s uh, uh, slow machine. So what does that mean? I mean, what, what, what is the memory footprint and, and what type? Can we run that on the phone or something like that? Is, is, I mean, well, of course, it depends a bit on what, what you want to handle, but I think Germany is pretty doable in, I don't know, four gigabytes of, of uh, RAM if you have this on your local laptop. And if you have a bit more time and, I don't know, eight gigabytes of RAM and use a special setting, then you can also do this for Europe and uh, have, have a good speed also there, yeah, I think. But the Thanks. more memory you have, the faster we will have it, the resource. Last question. Okay, I have a question about the uh, analysis of the traffic accidents. So you presented that there were kind of 60-something roads without limit and 60-something uh, uh, percentage uh, of, of traffic accidents that, that looks like similar numbers. So where is the, the significance there that uh, there are more accidents on, on no limit streets? Um, there was a significant difference in this, but you, uh, uh, the five percent, I think it's it's uh, a significant difference. But still, um, I think that's not really something that would say something because if there's more traffic in in the segments without speed limits, then you kind of trick yourself. So you need traffic density, and that's what the journalist um, uh, Mr. Stolz does or did. Yeah. All right, Peter, where are you going to be today? Where can people find you to ask you more questions? Do you have a birds of a feather? Do you have, like, are you meeting people at coffee? Yeah, yeah, I will okay. be at coffee and I will have a black uh, shirt and so they will right. find me easily. That's right, and they will contribute or find a way to contribute to your project. So thank you. Thanks.